welcome back to the Stormwater Creek Podcast. Um, Thank you. Yeah, dude. Uh, Rossi, we're super excited to have you on. Um, we're joined today by Rossi Morgan of Instagram fame and <laughs> Southeast Texas duck hunter, which is uh, you know a thing in of itself. So how you doing, man? I'm good. How are y'all? Good. Living Can't complain. Dream, yeah. Good. Living the dream. It's duck season. We're into the second split. It is. That's been it's good. Great How about if I could your... shoot some ducks? You've been having a good one, or how's it going for you? Uh man, it's been all right. Uh, it's been a little slow because I've been going out by myself and not trying as hard as I should have. Um, yeah, but that's that's my own fault. But well, wow. and then then obviously we were all out there when the rainstorms came. So this past weekend, so uh, I finally gave up after. I, all I saw was a, a one group of whistlers and not another duck. So, well, that uh, what was that? I think that was what Sunday, uh, last Sunday. Yeah, it was Sunday. That I I saw your truck out there and uh, brave on you to stay out there during that because I was like, we got out there and um, was just like, okay, I think it's going to get a storm coming through here, but it's supposed to kind of stay a little further north of us. Um, yeah. So we'll go out and we went out and. It was, I mean, I've got to get a pair of goggles for my boat. I don't have <laughs> anything because driving in the driving rain, this is twice this year I've done it, and it is horrible. Just like getting ice crystals, and it is like stinging in my face. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> trying to drive with driving rain hitting you in the eyes. Not fun. Yeah, that, yeah it, was, okay. it was a little rough, but I told you, you, like, you. What are you talking about, Austin? Have you ever ridden a motorcycle no. through New Mexico oh. with no windshield in a rainstorm? No. no, I haven't. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. My parents raised me right. <laughs> I'm not a DJ. <laughs> I, I, when I was 18, I rode to Red River from Amarillo with the Banditos. So, yeah. were you packing? I got some life experience. There's no doubt he was packing. <laughs> no, I didn't know. I don't. Did I have a gun then? No, I didn't have a gun yet. I had a shotgun. Did you just have it strapped yeah, on your yeah. back? <laughs> <laughs> I had a scabbard and pretended I was Jax Teller. Yeah. I wore some white tennis shoes. You got a it was pros- tight, dog. A prospect vest? Exactly. It was a Sons of Anarchy prospect vest. Yeah. <laughs> the the real it. deal. Oh, did yeah. y'all try to go did y'all try to go shoot up a Twin Peaks or what? <laughs> I always wanted to. That got shut down too early. Dude. <laughs> if you were going to shoot up a restaurant, I feel like you'd shoot up a Twin Peaks. A I, I I agree with you. That's bottom tier. Yeah. You got the rival games. It's, ugh. Like a Hooters is classy. Granted, it's I didn't okay. think they could get the short shorter, but you, they did. You haven't, you haven't been in Galveston a year, and you've been in Galveston too long. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're saying that Hooters is classy, Hooters? I think we're done here. Oh, well, fuck. first of all, in Galveston, everything is done by like nine o'clock um, food wise. And so sometimes you're just like, OK, well, this is our option. Let's just nothing go good Hooters. happens after dark. I mean, there's some there's not really that many restaurants that stay open super late. Yeah. Dude, I was in, go to bed. I was in Galveston uh, just uh, last Friday for a company party and we stayed at the Galvez, but all the everybody wanted to go out. And we went to that uh, Buckshot's place. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Trash. <laughs> <laughs> and have you all ever heard of the West Coast Slide? No. No, do tell. Oh, man. All right. I don't know much about it, but, man, that is literally the dance that they do to every single song now. And they've just turned every single song into a line dance. And Ugh. it's it's terrible. We asked him to play yeah. some good music, and he's like, no, it would change the we vibe of this place. Yeah, that's what we're getting at, homie. It's changing the vibe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> buck Gosh. shots. Yeah, I've never been there before. Uh, we did a. I've, I've been to Alibi, right. which was a just a cool little Galveston shit bar. We went to uh, the. Uh, I've been to Alibi. Oktoberfest. What's the Irish bar? Irish pub. Uh, um, Mc, um, Mc, Mc something. Mc something. Yeah, I was gonna say McDonald's. It's got to be Mc something. <laughs> and they're, they're all Mc something. Yeah, McCormick, McGree. No, McGreevy's is Boston. Mc uh, McQuaid's. On. It's where I have to go watch Cowboys games when they play out of when they. But anywho, yeah. at the Same time. It's an interesting place. I mean, they're all interesting, but it's all good. 
Hold on a sec. Now I gotta. Now is I there just a real, <laughs> real, real shitty dive bar? I mean, I'm sure there is. In like Galveston, Abe, you know, like caves and yeah, like sunshine, <laughs> caves, <laughs> Aussie, sun- O'Malley's. O'Malley's is that the it's one O'Malley's, we were talking about? Murphy's uh, Pub. Okay. Murphy's Pub. Oh, Murphy's. There's. I mean, I think the line forms to the left are just shitty bars. I mean, you were in Bubba's across from Tiki Island. (laughs) Oh yeah, they're never. Yeah, I retract my statement. Bubba's. You want to take the golf cart over there? To a T. Hey, y'all come up here. Come up here to my area in Kingwood. We can go to a double wide trailer that's a bar. Oh my gosh, sold. Yeah. Oh yes. Two minute like walk. Oh. oh yes, love it. There's a bar in Dallas <clears throat> called Double Wide, and it's decorated like a Trailer. like a like a like a double wide with you know shitty deer mounts and shitty duck <laughs> mounts, and all that garbage, and velvet they have, paintings. Yeah, velvet they velvet tires paintings on and, the top of the roof. <laughs> yeah, they threw tires up there, and and their their one of their drinks is like uh, alcoholic yoo-hoo or something. It says hits harder than daddy. <laughs> oh <laughs> like, my god, they lean in. It's they like, lean into it. It's like it's a wonderful. frozen margarita, but out of YooHoo. Is it called the white beer? It has nothing to do with a mar- exactly. It has nothing to do with with margarita. No, it's just a frozen. It's frozen. It's, it's in a frozen margarita machine. That's how that's they just a it. frozen drink machine. Whatever. Ooh, I used to bartend. I, so did you? Yeah, that's I why I'm ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it. Uh, <laughs> Anywho. Yeah, so duck season uh, has been uh, has been pretty good, pretty good. I've shot a bunch of ducks this year. Uh, I feel pretty lucky to have that. You boys have been shooting a bunch of ducks up in North Texas as well. Yeah, had not has not been bad at all. Yeah. I feel like you guys There's have been, definitely been, had to compete more for your spots than you have in the past. It yeah, ha- it has been busier. I think where we're at than I have ever seen it. Yeah, like, it, it, it's it been has. like it's, it's been like almost opening morning. Here, every time we've gone out. But it makes sense. I mean, yeah, I mean, birds are here. It's not hard. And the place we hunt a lot is is pretty convenient to get to, the lake. And so opening day, you've got just a lake full of weekend warriors, and that's fine. Do your thing. And so they're usually done after they shoot a couple opening day or get skunked maybe the next weekend. And if they get skunked, they're kind of done. But they're, I mean, opening day here, the lake was holding thousands of birds legitimately. And so everybody smoked a ton of birds. So they're like, cool, I'm going back. And there's been birds since. So everybody's actually shooting birds, which is obviously highly motivating to keep going versus I'm sleeping in because I haven't shot a bird in three weeks. Especially yeah. after the last yeah. couple of years up there. Totally. I oh, quit yeah. last year early. Jordan and I grinded it out. So. Yeah, well, not much luck though. I mean, we. <laughs> no. I just didn't want to give up. I'm with you. Yeah, no. My, mom and ain't didn't raise no quit in this one. <laughs> no doubt. Rossi, what boat are you running? Man, it's uh, Edge 550 2013. Uh, and then you I, running a mud motor? Absolutely not. Uh, no, which is okay. what I wanted to talk about with you is that <laughs> yeah, your motor. I'm always. Ta- I'm. Abe's got to go devil. I've got to go devil. I didn't buy it out of brand preference. I bought it because I wanted my boat and found a hell of a deal. And I like it just fine. So I'm always interested to talk to other people about different boats and motors just to, you know, expand my knowledge because this might have been my first and only. Yeah, so I've got a bad taste in my mouth for mud motors, mainly because uh, one of my best friends and hunting buddies, um, he uh, spent the money and bought a Prodigy. Beautiful boat. Ooh. Yeah, so beautiful yeah. boat. But since there's some areas that I won't say the names that we hunt that are horsepower restricted, he had a mm-hmm. 23 horsepower Go Devil for a long time. And if you actually follow the rules, like along the letter, you got to have a nine inch prop also. You can't run yep. a 12 inch prop. And so we were running a nine inch prop with this 23 horse, uh, Go Devil about nine miles, nine miles an hour down a major, uh, traffic way of water, if I could say that. Mm-hmm. And sure. muffler is just red hot. I mean, RPMs are like yeah, pushing 7,000 and we're not going yeah. fast enough to even drown if you fall out. So I, I just, because his boat, now one, it's, his boat's heavy. So it's, it's not like a 23 horse go devil is going to push it very fast anyways, but 
I don't know, man. Whenever I first, uh, like you said, I got a good deal on a, uh, just an old E-Tech, the 2010 E-Tech that it had like maybe 10 hours on it. Bought it from an old man and only had to replace one part and runs amazing. So I've always ran an outboard ever since. And you don't, you don't have any issues of banging the lower end or anything? Oh, absolutely. Some. <laughs> <laughs> You just run. You run a flipping jack plate or whatever. I'm I'm less familiar with that those rigs than I am. Dude, it's it's even worse than that. I've got I have no tilt and trim, so it's all manual. So if I get yep. too shallow, I got to reach back there, pull the motor up, lock it in place, and then pedal out so I can get it to the channel, and then drop it back down and hop up on plane. Um, mm-hmm. But for being a little e tech, it chugs. It'll chug mud pretty darn well. And uh, I think most recently when I was out there um, at the Dubs. You can call it that. Uh, sure. I hit something. I hit something pretty hard, and my counter uh, counter rotation tab mm-hmm. is all jacked up. So I had to fight my motor all the way back to the ramp that day. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've hit I've hit a couple things out at the uh, that spot now, and I, once I hit the hardest I've ever hit something, it ripped the motor out of my hands, and I don't have a lower unit, That's you know. It. That happens all the time. I know, yeah, but no. it was just—it was the first time it had occurred to me. That it actually happened to me, where it knocked the motor out of my hand. I've had it like, oh, there's something, you know, but never something that was hit hit so hard it yanked the motor out of my hand. So, it gets, you ever uh, hunted Livingston? Jordan. What's that? You ever hunted Livingston? I have not. Mm-mm. So there's a there's an area everyone knows about it. So it's not like I'm you know breaking any codes here, spot. but. And it's really not that good from what I understand. Um, it's, it's basically a minefield of stumps that you can't see. And my buddy had his sick waders for maybe the first year or maybe it was early in the second year and just ripped a huge hole in his waders from losing his motor out of his hand on the stone. Uh, Ugh. Massive hole. I warranty that. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's good. Uh, crazy enough. Oh. Yeah, crazy enough. They took it, they patched them, and they put new boots on it, on his uh, sick waders for free. Oh, that's, that's all right. That's, that's pretty stand uh, up right we, there. We, we've been talking about that because we've been in this whole thing about we always buy, like you, we were talking about earlier before the podcast about spending money. And I'm like, man, they look good. They look like, you know, you get them to kind of fit a little bit. You know, you get small, medium, large, all this stuff. I'm like, I like it, except for that price tag. Yeah, it hurts. And first time, the first time you walk, cause we walk it a lot of, we walk in, we bust brush a lot with our waders on, we do a lot of stuff like that. And I'm like, just, I don't know if I would be able to do that stuff in thousand dollar waders. <laughs> like I'd be like, uh, uh, put why? some chaps on over them. Yeah, something. I agree. The, but the two, two guys I hunt with the most, they both run them and they, yeah. they both gotten new pairs of boots. One, one pair of waders said two pairs of new boots for free. So, I mean, Shit. they honor their warranty. I'll give it to them. That, that's great. Yeah, we've yeah, had I a, mean, that's that's good to know. <clears throat> yeah. Noted. I'm uh I'm I'm trying to win a pair. So, uh, that's my strategy as a de- degenerate gambler. I'm like, where can I find a pair yeah. that I can put like 20 He's got a gambling problem just say no. It's not a gambling hey, problem. That. that insinuates that I quit. I didn't quit. I bet on two <laughs> bad. I bet on Boston U. Rhode Island um, basketball, college basketball the other day. Two games I couldn't even watch. I just watched them because I heard that they were two good money lines to put money on. I won $10. And I'm, <laughs> I'm addicted, you know. I'm a degenerate. I have a 18 parlay going right now for football because we're playing football Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I'm – You got them spun up now. It's, it's yeah, just – It's guys. gotten worse since I've gotten down here, you know, so – of course it has, because you're in Galveston. Of course, I've just become a piece of garbage now. Uh, I'm a garbage can. Um, Not a garbage can. Exactly. Exactly. So, I would move to Galveston if I could, right now. Yeah, the wife and I, no kids. We were just like, let's just, just go to a place. She wanted to be on the water. I was like, okay, let's go. And so we we moved down here to uh, to Tiki Island, and we've we love it. It's great. So um, even though I've you know, had to yell at a kayaker on the boat ramp today because he just thought he <laughs> was just like immune to the uh, get your fucking ass out of the way rule of the road. Uh, this guy was sitting on the boat ramp when I pulled up, when I, I actually had a battery problem on my boat today. Um, 
thankfully it was at mm. the boat ramp. So I just push pulled back to the boat ramp and, uh, yeah. tied up. He was sitting there, um, and talking to his buddy and I'm like, whatever at that point, like, cool, you're just going to get your shit and get out. I didn't know if he was coming or going. So I go and there's two, a, a boat being pulled in. There's another boat <laughs> ba- about to back in. So I get my truck. They, these guys that are putting their boat in the water are trying to get all their last minute things. They're up out of the way like they should be. Uh, so I get in, kind of pull around, get in line. They back their boat in. They get off. That guy pulls out. There's another guy that was kind of in. We were kind of in. Maybe he cut in front of me. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. We were kind of right there. So he backs his trailer in, puts his boat in. That He gets out. I back my trailer in, get my boat in, and push pull my boat onto the trailer because I'm like, I'm not trying to run it with, I'm in a tight little situation with a bunch of boats. I'm like, I just, I'm going to push pull this thing and pull it up on the trailer and be done. Do that. I get my boat out of the water. This guy's still in the way. Another trailer backs down. They got that boat on and are pulling it out of the water. And this motherfucker's still not, he's just like pulling a seat out of his kayak. Just like sitting, taking up a lane on the boat ramp. Like, okay. Like it was like, get your shit out of the way, dude. Like, (laughs) <laughs> what are you doing? And, and he didn't even park. He parked on the other side of the boat ramp, so he had to walk back and forth to take his stuff back. I'm like, you're, you're already taking the lane up. Just pull your truck over there. And so it saved some time. And it was, I said some things. It was just like, hey, you know, you're not immune to the boat ramp etiquette. Like, get your shit out of the way. He's like, what? And I was like, get out of the way. We pulled three boats out of the water. <laughs> put another one in. Like, get out of the way. Like. Oh, okay, and I just got in the truck, and it was just like, "What are you doing, dude?" Like, yeah, this this uh, Saturday, uh, I won't tell you where, but you can ask me, like on the, you can call me and ask me offline. But, yeah, yeah, offline. I'm gonna be hunting somewhere that I gotta have a kayak this Saturday, so it should be pretty cool. Should, yeah, should, for sure, should be a good hunt, man. I I know one guy through social media. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but Irving Garza. Irving Garza. The dude is a, yeah, the, he, the dude is a master, man. He, he loves cooking duck. He loves preparing chef stuff. I mean, and on top oh. of that, he's always on the X. Huh. Like, he's just hmm. good. He shot two bands last year, shot a band this wow. year, all here in Southeast Texas by himself. Goes out in a kayak every time by himself. That's killer. That's, awesome. yeah. That's cool. That's awesome. Dude's legit. We'll have to, we'll have to check him out. Yeah. I mean, if you're in a kayak, I'll share his stuff to you. We, I mean, that's what we, you know, we've all, we've all started there. I mean, that's, we've all run kayaks. I it's still used to still have a kayak. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just, it's just another, another access opportunity. My thing Absolutely. is just like, you're just the same as a boat, get in and get out. Like you, and not to mention, you've got 12 other places you could pull your kayak up to that. I can't pull my boat up to, I can't back my trailer down into like, you yeah. know, at this boat ramp on the beach. Yeah. I can't do it there, you know? Uh, and just get it out of the way. And that guy was just like, la di da. Like, I'm just doing whatever I need to do. But I'm, I'm excited to hear where you're going to go with the kayak. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we've been, um, we've been hitting some places that are, that we have to, you can't, uh, take a boat in on. And, uh, is, it's been f- on fire. Yeah. It's just no pressure. It's just the thing is, it's just like most things. You get a place where ducks can't get shot at or don't get shot at very often because it's a pain in the ass to get to. You're going to kill ducks probably. Yep. Too yeah. many people choose the easy way out. Ugh. Oh, yeah. I'm guilty of it for sure. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. I do it on my off days when I'm by myself a lot. But whenever mm-hmm. you do work for the ducks, like dragging a kayak a mile, mm-hmm. yeah, and you actually shoot your limit or even if you get close, hell, even if you shoot feels one good. duck, it feels great. Totally. A hundred percent. Yeah. We hunted a couple of places that 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 are just horrible, horrible walks. Just terrible. Like easy. I've walked up mountains easier (laughs) to kill an elk. Absolutely. Than I've (laughs) done this shit. Elk hunts are easier than that, than one of those walks uh, by far. It's just, but you get there and you kill ducks because it's like smash. Nobody, nobody wants to do it. So, uh, they're all just like, no, nah, I'm just going to boat in here and I'll watch all the ducks go to another spot, you know? <laughs> so absolutely. So I'm you, sure we uh, walked into a lot of the same places. 
Oh, I 100% have. I'm yeah. I'm interested to hear this kayak spot if it is the spot I'm talking about cuz uh you can kayak there uh but you can't walk. So, you can't boat in, but um yeah. So, the outboard, you you've got a 25 horsepower, right? I think Tasu yes, or something like that. Uh That's a uh, E-Tech. E-Tech, okay. Um and Hunted Arkansas at all? Done any of that kind of thing? Or are you mainly down here? Man, uh, I spent a lot of my time down here. I, you know, I got family. I got two kids. Mm-hmm. So I try to be a responsible husband and try to just do yeah. day hunts and be home. So um, I don't get to take a lot of trips that I want to. Um, but what really sucks is I actually have my, – my brother is a purebred – full-blown Arkansas public land duck hunter. Oh, man. And he smashes mallards. And he always calls me. He's like, man, when are you coming up? When are you coming up? I'm like, I'm working on it. I'm trying. i got to find a day. i got to use PTO or something. Mm-hmm. But he does great. And uh, I just haven't been able to use that avenue yet. Yeah. But. Well, if you need somebody to drive you up there, I feel like we could, <laughs> we could, we could figure it out. To get you a truck to get up there for sure. Absolutely. We've been wanting to smash some mallards and some flooded timber like that. Uh, I mean, we've done it. Uh, that's happened a bunch up in Dallas, but I feel like kind of checking that Arkansas box is like, a, okay, we've done that. Seems like a pretty Absolutely. cool thing to do. Yeah, I, I definitely want to get the Arkansas <clears throat> timber experience. We've got a lease out in East Texas, and it gets some flooded timber, and that's real fun. So I'd like to, you know, check that big Arkansas box of timber and some dry land hunting, dry field hunting. But it's, I get it, and it's awesome to be in the timber. But just shooting all mallards is cool. I'd rather be on the coast and shoot a mixed bag, or up here and shoot a mixed bag. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would never unhappy to shoot a trap of greenheads, but... It's real cool to shoot some other but stuff. To shoot like two green wings, two blue wings, a gadwall, a widgeon, and a and a entail a, a would be pre- is pretty tight. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's cool. It is cool, man. But the, lately, I've just been. I love my wood ducks. Yeah. Oh yeah. To me, there's nothing more beautiful than a wood duck. I mean, no yeah. Worried. Like you, uh, you said on another podcast, shooting a a battleship mallard is great. Yeah, but sometimes one of those those wood ducks just do it right. It's 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 like a work of art. No mm-hmm. doubt. My my dog Max, his first retrieval was a wood duck, and it's on the wall because it was his first. But man, love him. That's awesome. Yeah, we've uh, we'll have to uh, you shoot you shoot many wood ducks this year. Uh, we've had a couple blowouts where we busted quite a few, but yeah, um. Not as much in years previous, if you scroll back on my Instagram. Yeah. I think last year we had a smasher. I mean, like a four-man limit with some bonus ducks. It was great. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's fun. That's the cool thing about hunting wood ducks like that. Typically, that's going to be a, and we're done. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. it's over, you know. First and I hate that, I hate that, uh. My brother, I told you, he's an Arkansas purebred, whatever you want to call it, Arkansas public land duck hunter. They won't shoot wood ducks. They let them pass. He's like, we let them land and just sit, and we wait for the mallards. I was like, I guess I guess that's okay. I mean, I guess it's cool, man, but... Is the reason anything beyond just, you know, letting them so they can populate more and, you know, helping the species, or they just don't want them? Uh, man, I'm not sure. He just told me it, it all... Not to knock Arkansas duck hunters, but it almost seemed like a, a cocky thing. Like, oh, we don't shoot sure. ducks. We shoot mallards. We shoot green heads. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like the guys who kind of talk shit about shooting hens. I get it. Don't get me wrong. I understand. They taste the same. But there's lots of times when you, you taste the same. <laughs> the same. And yeah, if it's a, it, in perfect conditions, you can absolutely tell. There's a lot of conditions we hunt in that you ain't, you're not going to tell until it's on the, it's dead. Yeah, absolutely. So hens died. You know, I see guys posting like, "Oh, I see some brown duck shooters out there." <laughs> whatever, man. Brown Just whatever. Duck Get out, yeah. Um, I'm taking those things home to eat. No doubt. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, what's the coolest duck you shot? Like, what's your okay? Like, number one? Like, oh my god, this was the best thing! I can't believe we shot that. Man, 
it's that's hard to quantify because uh, I think the first time I shot a wood duck was like up there was okay. you know the top of the line, and then whenever I me and my buddy went uh, to a certain hole and we were successful in shooting one of those battleship mallards in southeast Texas, yeah. that was a solid moment for us both too. So because I I grew up in Tennessee and we shot plenty of ducks when I was a kid. I mean. I loved it and enjoyed it, and that's where it started for me. And then moving to Texas and seeing myself succeed sometimes in Texas by shooting good ducks and wall hangers and stuff like that, it's always made the top of the list. Yeah. No doubt. You shot any hybrids sure. or any, any crazy kind of weird ducks? No, no hybrids, and surprisingly not, I've not shot a model duck yet. No model ducks? Okay. No model ducks. That's That's on the list. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, I thought I was going to get to shoot some sandhill cranes on Wednesday, but that, that's been, uh, pulled out from under me. But I think it'll happen before the season's over. There's a bunch down here right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, we were on our way back from a hunt. Uh, we had them over us on a hunt and just, uh, just flying high and not, not paying attention to us and not, didn't, didn't want to be where we were at. But it's amazing. Just no matter where they're at, they sound like they're on top of you. Yeah. They're just like, oh, my God, that thing is like 900 yards into the sky, and it sounds like it's buzzing us. Uh, so we saw I saw two fields full of them down here. Like what – not quite what we saw up near Mike uh, in Lubbock, but a field full of them yeah, on the way a, home on Saturday. That's a bucket list one. Yeah, they're good. Definitely. They're fun. And it's really a, a bucket list to film. Like, I just want to shoot one. Just know that I shot one and then put my gun down and pull a camera out. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things we wanted to talk to you, too, about was just uh, you do a lot of your is your photographer. You do a lot of duck filming. I mean, so how did you get into that whole line of work and how does that work? Well, I mean, I've always tried to buy the best phone for the camera. Like I'm going way back just mm-hmm. so I could take good pictures. And, uh, basically that developed into, I started hunting with the guy that I bought my edge from and, uh, great guy. His name's Jesse Medina. And, um, he's always been a waterfowl photographer. And I started hunting with him and we went on a bunch of trips and he's taking these amazing pictures way better than any galaxy or iPhone could. And I was like, man, I just, I need to get a camera. Well, I'd completely forgot that, um, my wife had a camera. And so I started using her old camera and I started taking out and it like sparked a whole new like interest in duck hunting behind the lens. It was, it was like a, it was game changer for me. Like I would, I truly would love, like I enjoy going on hunts now where it's just a bunch of dudes that, and I want, I don't even need to take a gun out. I'll just leave my gun up and just take pictures the whole time. And it still fulfills that, that fun moment for me. Yeah. Um, so did you have kind of like a, a DSLR type camera or were you like a, like a video camera type camcorder type thing or what were you, what were you using? It's always been a DSLR. And, uh, started with the old Nikon, like 3400. And okay. then I bought a, a used D800 off of a, another friend of mine. That's what I still use today. Yeah. And then just in terms of uh, like one of the things I've always kind of had trouble with as I, in the couple times I've tried to film duck hunts and more importantly, like as ducks are coming in, it's just like keeping ducks in focus. Like, yeah. Like, is it just a battle and there's just like, Hey, you just got to get good at it and you got to suck for a while and then get good at it. Well, how's that whole thing work? So, um, it's basically what you said, Yeah. but then it's also about having a really good camera body that has a, a really good focus on it. Okay. I'm not the best at filming uh, the ducks coming in. I'm not the best at that. Where I find that I shoot better video and better photos is after the ducks are shot, whether it's stills or it's the videos that, um, we're just hanging out in the hole and I'm just shooting yeah. videos for later slow mo stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it's I the s- focus issue is hard. Yeah. I see those, I see guys who could just, it just is incredible. And I'm just like, how? You know? Yeah. How do you guys, do that? How- it's crazy. Yeah, guys like uh, Joel B. Jones, mm-hmm. Joel Bo Jones, you know him? Yeah. 
he is, I mean, he is solid behind the camera. And it's just going to be time. so jealous. Yeah, it's just yeah. time and just practice of like, oh, that's unusable. Oh, that's unusable. I needed to do this. I needed to do that, you know, but. I, dude, the unusable to usable uh, ratio is, is very high. Because, yeah. I mean, I think maybe my usables are 20%, the rest is 80 Yeah. When yeah. it's all said and done. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's probably, we're, we're probably running about a 95 unusable, five usable percentage of stuff we filmed, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. I mean, our biggest thing with filming stuff is just like, we all get out there Actually, and then we stop doing it. Yeah, exactly. Like Jordan said, yeah. we just like, oh shit, who's, we're supposed to film, you know, we're supposed to film. It's because we don't have a dedicated you know, of course. camera guy because yeah. we're all hunting. So everybody gets set up like, oh, we got... 15 minutes till shooting, let's get situated and hunker down, and then shooting starts. And once the shooting starts, it's game over. Yeah, it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. you're, not, you're, not, you're not reevaluating the situation once the shooting starts. It's done. Yeah. Uh, or, know, or, or just for all airheads, we're like, wait a minute, where's the camera? Oh, it's in the truck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're not going back. We're not going back. Hey, did anybody bring an extra SD card? <laughs> yeah. uh, what I found to be the hardest is if you're running a boat and you're doing all the work yourself, it's really hard to get the camera out and do the same thing yeah. or to, to shoot whenever you're already doing all those other things. So when I get my content is usually whenever my buddies are running their boat, I'm just sitting in. You're just there yeah. hanging out and you're like, okay, I can focus now on yep. this. Yep, exactly. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to film hunts. Um, I think, for me, it's gotten to be one of those things we try to do to generate content for the podcast and stuff like that. But it's it's almost to me, I feel like the I'm almost getting to the point where it's like, I just want to document this for myself. And then if I have something that's usable, then the rest of the world can see it. And it seems to be a better mindset for me to be in as opposed to going in and be like, we're going to make a you know badass YouTube video out of this. You know, it's just like, let's just hang out and... Because we're not. <laughs> we're not. Exactly. Because we're not. So let's accept it. You know? If you set, if you set reasonable goals, you achieve them easier. Exactly. Exactly. That's the way it goes. So so you've uh you you've got a, a really you're you, really hilarious, very must watch, must follow Instagram reels accounts. I don't have TikTok. I used to have TikTok. I just I just do the Instagram Reels thing now. Um, so uh, you do have a funny in- a TikTok story, I think, that you you want to share. But uh, uh, Reels, you just uh, a lot of fun to make. I mean, do you how do you go about doing that? Well, man, honestly, Reels. If you want to create content, the first thing you should be making is Reels. Yeah. Reels are what gets you attention, um, and I don't know why that is, but it's the algorithm. So when I realized that and I started making reels, I uh, boosted my following and I just use a little Adobe Rush to do a lot of video editing and stuff like that. Um, but the TikTok has completely evolved because I try to keep, I try to keep my Instagram more professional, but TikTok, especially right out the gate, I was doing funny videos, <laughs> You're just saying- you know, Wearing a towel on my head to imitate my wife, you know, telling me not to go hunting or something like that. And she ended up not liking it overall. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, no way. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't believe you. Yeah. She, she finally asked me, she's like, stop making me look bad in all your videos. And I was like, all right. She's all like, right. I don't do that. You're like, I know you don't do that, but it's funny. Yeah. To, it, it's funny. It's people it makes have great wives content. that do that. So. Oh, so, but, I can't imagine if I made fun of my wife for things like that, it would be, I'd be, Hey, Rossi, I need to come crash at your house. <laughs> uh, cause it's, um, the couch, she won't even let me sleep on the couch. Yeah. Dude, I, I can't TikTok is its own beast, man. And, uh, the trolls live on TikTok like it's on, like if they're under a bridge <laughs> and <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's, I guess it's messed up of me, but I just love to mess with the trolls, man. It, Absolutely. And they get on my nerves, and then I realize, you know what? Let me just mess with them. And I, uh, I had posted a video the other day. We went to a, a walk-in spot at the Dubs, and um, we pulled up. And I was just making a funny video on my phone with a, a video of them while they were already sitting on the bank because they ran the hole first. 
And then I made another video right after that. I was like, hey, you know, what the heck y'all doing in our spot? Get out, you know? And he was like, no, F you, this is a, we got here first. And so I posted all this to TikTok as a joke. And I mean, people went off on me. Came out started of the like, how dare yeah, you? People, yeah, people were like, oh, you want to fight them because they got there first? How dare you? And because uh, I originally had commented on it, I just said, oh, it's three uh, three against two. Who who won the fight? And it just, the trolls took it by storm. I mean, one guy, one guy called me fat, said I couldn't even walk to a hole. <laughs> I would, I would get, some guy was like, oh, he'll get winded by just getting out of the boat. Which is probably right, but I mean, gosh, you didn't have to say it. It still kind of hurt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, another guy just kind of lost it. And he's like, you're the problem with public land duck hunting. It's people like you that are idiotic and moronic that is why, you know, everyone hates public land hunters. I'm like, good Lord, dude. <laughs> hey, it's a TikTok, bro. Calm down. These are my friends. Yeah, you're going to stroke out over a TikTok, <laughs> homie. Yeah, so out. I finally posted a video afterwards that showed us all walking in together. And I was like, look. This is for all you that lost your ever loving mind yesterday. But didn't get as I much like it, so. didn't get as much traction on that one, huh? No, no, I didn't. That's always the way it is. You're, you're like, hey, we were joking. It was a good uh, news doesn't sell, man. Exactly. Yeah, and there's people that have common sense that are like, y'all chill out. This is this is his buddies he always hunts with. Like these people are in all his other videos. Have you not yeah. like just <laughs> like, seen <laughs> I mean, three of his videos? Yeah, you'd see that boat that they're in. You'd see the yeah. boat that I'm in. I mean, you'd see them at ramps. You'd see them everywhere. It's uh, insane. But like I said, TikTok's a, a different beast. Instagram, I, I try to keep more professional and and just post good pictures and good reels. Yeah, I, we did. For sure. We did the TikTok thing for a little while, uh, and it just was. I, I've have a we have a hard enough time just posting stuff constantly on Instagram. We're like, we'll just we'll just stick with Instagram. Uh, we should probably yeah. be on TikTok. That's where we should probably do all of our, uh, you know, like, all right, let's uh, let's fuck it, let's see what happens. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, you could, you could definitely build the haters. I mean, haters make a make a following somehow. I don't know how it works or why they do it, but haters make a following. It's interactions. It's yeah. just interact. Yeah, exactly. They're like, oh, people are paying attention to this. Let's show it to more people. <laughs> yeah, they're commenting. They're like, oh, people are commenting. They like it when all the comments are like. I hope you drown. <laughs> you <know? laughs> That's a very true comment. I hope you drowned. Uh, I mean, that's the kind of intelligence you see in these comments. Oh, it's, people lose I'm their, in a, people, uh, You realize this is knee deep and I'm in a boat. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they lose their mind about everything. I mean, mm -hmm. for one of the first years, my buddy had like a, a dog that was 100% go-go all the time, just ready to go. And so we tired down in the boat so she couldn't just jump out whenever she wanted to. I mean, she was a new, she's a puppy. And some dude just lost his mind. What are you going to do if your boat flips? You just going to let your dog drown? I was like, I was like, no, we probably all drown trying to get the dog. So yeah. Yeah. the dog will go free. We may drown. Yeah, exactly. Uh, good Lord. And flipping a boat's a lot tougher than you think it is. Absolutely. Like, I mean, it barely I mean, People have flipped pontoon boats. Yeah, but I mean, heard that one. That, um, was, that seems impossible. <laughs> I mean, you see the giant crazy jet boats or whatever flip because it's they flip vertical because I catch too much they air. Take off. But flipping like my fucking my my eighteen sixty go devil with a thirty five <laughs> horse, like it ain't flipping, dog. It ain't yeah. gonna happen. Especially if there's more than two people in there. Yeah, yeah there's like to... if we if I've got four people, the dog and gear, and we break twelve miles an hour, we're crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, no, that's not really a concern. I didn't tell Jordan this the other day. I didn't tell Jordan. I did tell Austin this. But the other day I had five people in my boat with gear. No no decoys, yeah. nothing like that. But I had five, five dudes, stage two guns and backpacks. Um, yeah, stage two. But it's just like at some point it's like what is the, the wake? <laughs> I, I was over wake capacity for sure. Uh I had thankfully one of the guys showed up with a life jacket. That's just a number, bro. <laughs> it is it's just like a suggestion. And it, I'll tell you what, it took me a minute to get up on plane. Getting on plane was a nightmare. <laughs> but once I got up on plane, it was like, okay, I'm rocking and rolling. I'm sure we all oh, have yeah. some boat sketchy stories. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, any duck hunter does. I mean, my whole first year of duck hunting, buddy, 
We had a, he had a 1448 with that 23 horse, uh, Go Devil on it. And his transom was literally ripping off at the seams. <laughs> <laughs> it was being rewelded like at least once, uh, two, every two weeks. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. Uh, uh, Jordan and I have, I feel like Jordan and I have had the most, uh, sketchiest of boat situations. Uh, we've dragged Austin behind a boat with a trolling motor, a twelve, a fourteen foot thirty two, with a trolling so it's motor. It's a pencil. Yeah. Tro- towing two kayaks, one with him in the back of, of one of those kayaks. One was gear, <laughs> one was Austin, and then we had three was it, dudes. Was me, you, and then uh, Gavin, your buddy, Gavin, Gavin. Gavin was with us, and we went out. Deer like that. and that was the funniest one because that was the one wasn't that the one where we had a little bit of a little bit of a storm and Abe was like we gotta turn back boys and Austin's oh, yeah. in the back of the guy like laid out like chilling like because it, it was like it was sept it was bow season so it was yeah. like October and in Texas so it's seventy five degrees and the water's still seventy five degrees eighty degrees so I'm like nothing's gonna happen here like I'm gonna just swim over to right there and. Chill out till the storm yeah. stops, Abe, and then we'll go back. I mean, Abe's come a long way since when he first started uh, his boat uh, journey. Uh, he he'd freak out when his John boat had like too much water in it, and uh, <laughs> we'd be like, "Dude, it's just John boat. You're always gonna have water." And he's like, "I don't know, man. We gotta we gotta get back to shore real quick." Hey, what? There's two times this year the amount of water in my boat has been like. This is. You have a bilge pump. Oh, no, no, I know. I just flipped the bilge pump on. I'm like, whatever. It's just mainly it's been like sitting there collecting rain is what it has been. Um, yeah. I, I did dump this. I did dump one corner of my boat turning around because I was like, oh shit, that's a cool place to look that's at. Normal. And I spun that motor around, and I like I was looking forward, and I kind of looked back just to kind of see like where where is my ass in going? And I looked over, I was like, oh, there's just water pouring into this boat right now. And I straightened it out, the boat stuck back up, and I was like, oh, there's a uh, my buddy in the front of the boat. I was like, I was like, oh shit! So I I like reached back to hit the bilge pump. And uh, he was like, is everything all right? I'm like, there's a bunch of water in this boat right now. <laughs> and uh, it's got foam. It ain't going to sink. Oh, no. But, I'm, yeah. That's, like, those are normal things, too. One your, float, your, your bilge doesn't have an auto float? I don't have a float valve on mine. Hmm. Do you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's broken now, but it, <laughs> it, 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 it worked until last year. <laughs> I mean, I mean, te- technically, it's technically there. there. Technically, it's there. It but, I, but I also know it's broken, so I pay close attention to like everybody getting in and out. Like, eh, that'll, I can dump some water, oh, but it, it exists. I do the it same thing. Work. I just flip the switch on, and but it was just like sometimes you just like, like in that situation, you're just like, oh, shit, there's a bunch of water back here. So, uh, But I, I wasn't... I'm a hundred percent. I I feel very, I I wish you guys could have seen that because it's like, it doesn't even affect me like it used to. That's good. You know, I'm not afraid to touch fish anymore. Um, (laughs) That's not true. It's a hundred percent. Babe's afraid of fish. I'm not afraid of fish. I used to be afraid of fish. I'm not afraid of fish. So it's changed in like the last couple months. Yeah. Exposure, man. I don't believe this. You just wait. Exposure. (laughs) Exposure. Okay. Hey, Wait. at least y'all build pumps work. Mine hasn't worked since like 2019. Oh no! Huh? Yeah. It happens. It happens. Got the old Yeti cup failure in the back. Yep. Hey man. <laughs> I mean, and spe- if you've been hunting these ra- <laughs> these rainstorms, that's a <laughs> lot of wild. that's a lot of dumping water out. Or you're just like, yeah, this will come out at the boat ramp. Yeah, it'll come out at the boat ramp. That that day it rained on us all day out there. Mm-hmm. Man. Uh, Running back in my floor where my feet were was like four inches. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was insane. Love it. Yeah, this is uh, I, I this is the most You're feeling pretty good here, buddy. Weather I've hunted in. Uh, I've been in two, three lightning storms now, um, and I say lightning storms, I say thunderstorms. One there was one lightning bolt that struck and was like, oh god, that was <laughs> that's on top of us. Uh, <laughs> Two that were pretty close, one that was really close, and then one that was like, I'm really sketched out by this because it was the first one. But um, it was, uh, it's been some crazy weather down here. 
I mean, I say that I'm new down here, so maybe it's just like, no, this is a Tuesday down here during this time of the <laughs> yeah. year. So South Texas storms are no joke. So for real, uh, being down here for the first time, I have encountered uh, alligators while duck hunting for the first more than I ever have in my entire life. So what's your, uh, you got any good alligator duck hunting stories like, or alligator stories in general, like while you're out and about? I think the, the best ones are when we go hunt the marsh, Uh Uh, we basically spend a solid, you know, 30, 40 minutes, depending on what time we get there, just trying to run the gators out of each hole. Just the hole that we're hunting. Yeah, because they'll eat your ducks if you don't go get them quick enough. Mm-hmm. And then my buddy, uh, his dog, he just lost a dog, but, uh, she was, she was like a, a 40, maybe 55 pound lab. And still some of those gators could have tore her up, even though they probably wouldn't mess with her. But so we'd run around and try to slap them on the hill with paddles. Try just to <laughs> get them, just to get them out of the, out of the area. Yeah. We were hunting a spot, uh, and, this these it wasn't even us it was another group they had a a girlfriend with them and two dudes and they were shooting ducks first light and alligator just smashing the down ducks and they finally like we're done here like let's just get out of here so they go to start to collect their decoys and this gator came after them and i think it was the girl that bitch walked on water from what I heard to get out of there, uh, which don't blame her. Uh, so uh, they called the game warden and they were like, uh, what's like, what do we do here? This thing is not letting us get it. They were like, don't shoot it. We'll come and get it out of there. They, they pulled a, uh, I think it was a 12 foot alligator nuisance gator out of that hole with a fucking backhoe to get it out of there. Gosh. And just like, Dude, uh, I forgot about this, but there was, there was a time that we were trying to run to a specific hole and I used to have a, uh, a water pump issue in my, in my motor. So it has a computer in it, you know, it's a smart motor. So it, it thinks it wants to shut down the second that it gets too hot. So we never made it to this hole because the motor kept shutting down, trying to navigate over logs with the outboard. And, um, <laughs> so we just, I, I tied up to a random tree and we just started walking to find a different hole. And we get there, we hunt, ducks are flying, we missed a few, we killed a couple. And then whenever my buddy's like, hey, let's back up and leave, I got I got stuff I got to do today. We didn't notice it at first when we were hunting, but all of a sudden, all we could hear is these little baby gators behind us just croaking. Oh. Just meh, meh, whatever they do, I can't, I can't imitate the sound. And so I look back, and sure enough, there is like nine-inch little gators just swimming all around us. Back behind us. I mean, insane. And I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> I thought we were in trouble. I was like, the big Mama's ones are around somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Mama's got to be somewhere. And, uh, we looked at them and, and walked around them and then decided just to get the heck out of there. But Mama never came. I don't know where she was. She must have been doing something other than protecting her babies like normal. I feel like I, I've, I feel like I've tried to treat gators like I do ba- like black bears. Like legitimately, grizzlies are another. To me, that's a whole other thing, right? But black bears and gators, I, f- I treat kind of similar. Uh, if yeah. I leave them alone, they're going to leave me alone. And uh, you know, a five foot gator is going to scratch me up pretty good. But I'm not going to die from it. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, a five foot gator is going to kill me. Like, what? How's it going to kill me? It's not, it's not, it's going to drown you and it does anything. It, that's it. I mean, I f- it's going to pull you down, tug you under. I mean, like I'm, I it's could, not going to, you know, if I'm like, you're you scared, you're scared of fish. You're, you're not going to fight a gator. You're scared <laughs> of fish. Right, right. You wouldn't touch a sand bass, Abe. Come on, man. No, let me tell you, there's a difference between being snatched by something and being like, oh my God, I got to fight for my life and be like, ooh, it's slimy. I don't want to get finned. I don't think is, that's is true. Really, I don't it, think that's true at yeah. all. I can see you, some... if you're, if you're, 
Do you, if your stress level is activated by a sand bass, you think you're going to react well to an alligator? Well, what do you think I'm like, going to do? Just like, I'm oh, it fucking is just going to kill me? I think you're going to scream like a girl and flail. 100%. And then I'm gonna and that's try not to, gonna and then at some point I'm gonna go I'm gonna snatch to snatch this fucking thing's eye out. At oh, yeah. some point. Like, at some oh, point. oh I did so. it. Happy Gilmore. You, and during the what? The ten minutes you got to think about it? Like, <laughs> what, what are you I can hold my breath for four minutes. <laughs> He's gonna be up at the pearly gates going, damn, I should have smashed its eye out. <laughs> yeah, I think you're gonna get death rolled for sure. You might break some bones. Exactly. But a five exactly. foot gator could a five foot gator death roll me. To my dad. Yes, yes, but I don't. I, are the chances low? Also, yes, but it definitely. It's built for the water. You ain't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> We'd I be in the blind thing on the gator. Yeah, you'd, you gambled on the gator. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I'm taking the gator all yeah. day. Uh-huh. Like, who you taking in a foot race? Me or a shark? You like, do. it's the same the idea. Shark doesn't have feet. And the yeah, run and on you land. don't have flippers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the shark can't run on land. Burned, <laughs> lawyered. <laughs> Exactly. And you can't swim near as efficiently as a gator. You can swim, though, right? I mean, of course. <laughs> I only doggy paddle. Yeah. <laughs> so, anywho. Doggy paddle. The chances are low, but a five-foot gator could definitely drown you. I'm not saying that it couldn't drown me. I'm just saying a five-foot gator doesn't register to me as a <laughs> right, point right, of danger. Right. That, that's cool. I get I need it. Nine feet plus. <laughs> I don't think you understand how big of a gator that is. It's a giant gator. Yeah. It's a giant gator. Uh, if you spend enough yeah. time on the Trinity, you'll see a you'll see a good twelve footer. We yeah. saw one mm-hmm. the other day, uh, not on the Trinity, on another spot that was like every bit of that, and we were just like, "Oh, that's a massive gator. That 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 Ooh. thing would yank me under, and I'd never come back alive." You know. I feel like yeah. the places we hunt are not deep enough for a gator to get me down in the water long enough for me to find. <laughs> okay. So anyways. <laughs> are you the same guy who's like, yeah, if something happened, I could totally land this plane. I mean, no, no, <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, no. Absolutely. I mean, I'm that guy. <laughs> I mean, I could get it down on the ground. I just would probably like <laughs> <you know, laughs> be in Jesus Jesus in flames. But, but anywho, like, how many people have to die, yeah. like, before it's a successful landing for me? You know, it's like golf. Lower's better. <laughs> oh my god! True that. Well, this has been a so, fun podcast. Uh, I want to talk one one thing about like decoy strategies you use because we always talk about this. This is always a discussion between the group, so I like to always get someone's opinion. Like, uh, in general, are you a lot of decoys guy, small decoys? Because I know that you know some people always say like, how many ducks are in the area? Blah blah blah. I know some guys are like two dozen minimum, no matter what. I know guys are like, I take a duck decoy and a robo duck and slaughter it. So, yeah, yeah. where are you at on all that? Man, I'm, uh, I guess you could say I'm on two spectrums. And let me preface one by saying that when we were still able to shoot three divers here in Texas, or when I say divers, I mean specifically uh, uh, bluebills. When we were able to shoot three bluebills, we would run with... I mean, sometimes a hundred decoys at late season to try to smash bluebills and it worked. But other than that, I tend to find myself using uh, the least amount of decoys that I can. And I don't do any specific shape or, um, yeah. you know, a W or a J or whatever people want to call it. I tend to try to always do just like a little natural clusters. And then give myself a little pocket somewhere where the ducks can feel safe to come in. And if I'm hunting alone, that's pretty much all I'm doing. But now my buddies are on the other side of the spectrum. And between all of us, uh, we might have 200 something decoys. And I've seen the majority of them thrown at once before. And it's hell picking them up. I guess, yeah, yeah. I guess you can kind of call me lazy because if you're throwing 250 decoys, you got to pick up 250 decoys. And Getting them 
out there. Like that ain't that's how many a boat job? Four boats. Um, I mean, two. Two. Have you seen how massive the new edges are? Like as big as no. they build them. Um, no. So you asked me earlier what I run. It's a 2013 yeah. 550, and uh-huh. it's relatively small. I mean, it's a 15 and a half foot, and the sidewalls. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but the sidewalls are less than, I don't know, two feet, closer to a foot and a half or so. It may mm-hmm. be around mm-hmm. two foot, I don't know. But the new edges, my buddy bought a brand new edge, it's like a 20, 22 edge. It, now granted it is a 17 foot, but the whole boat as it's, itself is just massive. I mean, it, it feels like you have an open floor plan in, in his boat. And then gotcha. the same thing also with the Prodigy. Uh, the Prodigy was originally uh, built for a yeah. mud motor that he bought it and had it custom built. Uh, but he left an open floor plan on it and one hatch in the front. So we got yep. all this room. And so with just their two boats, we could take as many decoys as I think we want. Gotcha. And I know, uh, recently y'all talked about heyday, uh, the decoys with somebody. I can't remember who it was. Um, yeah, Stockton, uh, Stockton, Stockton from Jordan Stockton. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy So, um, it's too rich for my blood. I have like, yeah. I have 12 of them, but that's because they were like Christmas gifts over the years. Yeah. But they, my two buddies, they have a lot of them and, um, we run the heck out of those deep ones. And they're obviously lightweight. You can step on them and run them over. So that, that definitely lessens the weight inside the boat. For sure. Those are, they're super nice. 200 yeah. decoys. Yeah. Though. I've, I've been, it's kind of like the waiters. I've been looking at them like, man. That'd be so nice, and but I just can't really pull the trigger on it. <laughs> like, yeah. So talk about chucking that many decoys out. How many blue? How many bluebells can y'all shoot down there now? We don't get them up here, so I don't know. Just one. Just one. One per oh, person. Wow. One Even though there's a okay. fucking metric shit ton of them. Yeah, I've got some old kind of like camarades running. Yeah, running across the main lake that that you know of, and I I was kicking up. I mean, thousands of bluebills, not just ringnecks, bluebills. Yeah. Wow. So do you think 250 decoys, like you said, versus 50 makes that much of a difference? In the old days, towards the end of season with the bluebills, uh, running 150, it seemed to work. The bluebills locked up, came in the way they were supposed to, and we'd, we'd always close out season with a little bluebill smash. I mean, okay. but I would never say, don't ever run the, that many decoys just hunting any regular ducks ever. Sure. I mean, that's, it's a massive amount. And sometimes I love my buddies to death, but sometimes they can get out of hand. <laughs> yeah. And they're, they're probably going to hear this too. So I'm probably going to hear it from them. Oh, they're going to be like, dude, good. I can't believe you didn't talk uh, about the time we had 3,000 decoys and <laughs> it worked. Well, me and my buddy almost fought one time. Just over decoys. Yeah. Is insane. The real quick story. Uh, me and my buddy were both going out. We went to the same place, but we went separate boats. Uh, he wanted to take his family out. It was his first time to take his wife and two kids out. And so he did a simple hunt. Uh, I won't call it a lazy hunt, but a simple hunt where he, the whole family just stayed in the boat. They tucked in on the bank, put some type of blind grass up and then threw a whole bunch of decoys out. And, uh, after he threw the decoys out and after the hunt was over, uh, he called me and I was on the other side of the lake from him and he's like, Hey man, I just realized it's too deep for me to walk. I need you to come help me pick up these 78 decoys. <laughs> I was like, dude, you gotta be kidding me. And so, yeah, it was too deep to walk. So we had to putter around, uh, in boats picking up, uh, at least 76 ducks. Decoys. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little ridiculous. <laughs> it's too many. It's too many. See, because because it's funny because we always talk. Me and me and Grinch talk decoys a lot, and we've kind of had some stuff we've learned recently that we really like uh, with our with our decoy spread. But like, we're always like, man, you know, like we took two dozen out, and to us that feels like way too many. Yeah. You know, and, and it works, you know, you can fill in some spots. So sometimes I'm, I'm more of a two, three dozen decoy kind of guy. If if there's, if there's a lot of ducks in the area, obviously, 
Uh, but we always seem to start shying back to less and less ducks and, uh, decoys. And it's, uh, I don't know. It's always interesting to hear other people's take on it. You know what I mean? Cause I, I think that's a normal talk, just like cutting a, a mojo because it's, you know, flaring ducks. If you, you know, think that. Yeah. Or if you know it, I'm gonna guess. <laughs> I'm gonna guess, Rossi. You're not the guy in your group that immediately, upon like first light, within ten minutes, you're like, "We got to change the spread." No, I'm not. I'm willing to sit yeah. and, and wait raise to your see hand how... if you're in that that person in this group. <laughs> Go ahead, sideburns. <laughs> uh... If there's a problem, I'll change it. <laughs> Let me guess. I don't, I don't, I'll say I don't change that first light. I'll change them pre-shooting or after the first couple flights come in and I don't like it. If we haven't shot three but ducks if, before yeah, 45 if, 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 minutes, you're changing the spread. Of course I am. Okay. What? I'm glad it's a standard. I really am because... Oh, there's one um, in every group. I've got an, I've well, got another group of people down here that we got that guy in that group, and that's Glenn. He immediately is like, oh, I got to go change this. I got to go do this. I got to do that. You know, there's one in every group, and we love them. You guys are putting yeah, the work absolutely. in. You're, you're grinding it out for us. We appreciate it. I've never been standing in the spread at shooting. At shooting lights at 645, I've never been standing in the spread at 645. That's never happened. You have been at 640. 640. <laughs> 640 and 648. You have been. No, seven maybe. I'm going to give it a couple flights, <laughs> then decide that mojo is the worst thing ever invented. Uh, I mean, our most heated arguments have come from deep voice spreads in my group. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, I'll agree with that. We shouldn't be doing this. This, this, this is stupid. We should be doing it a different way. <laughs> no, those are arguments have been had and been had across multiple groups of hunters. Yeah. Mm hmm. What? Where where are you at on motion? I don't have like any books. motion decoys, um, besides like a, a jerk rig. Okay. Um, but my group they do have quite a bit of motion decoys, and I think this is the first year that we're running two new uh, two new motion decoys. And don't get me lying, I don't know what they are at the moment. Um, but they seem to work pretty good. But there was a time uh, about two hunts ago, I was like, we need to pull, them. we need to pull, them. like. Yeah, we, we got a bull, and the ducks are just flying over. But mm -hmm. uh, we've we've kind of reverted into I think the consensus right now through our group is uh, those flock flickers that Mojo has. Uh, the just a little floating pedestal with a little wing that spins. Real, it's they're kind of small. Oh yeah, yeah. But man, those those things look fantastic from a little little distance. Like, it just looks like a, you know, a duck's moving inside the little bit of a spread. And, uh, jerk rigs are always, you know, a go to for, for us. Yeah. But I don't think we run too much motion. Yeah. Motion is, um, uh, it's good. It's a, it's a knife that cuts both ways, I think. Sometimes it's good. Oh, yeah, good, for sure. Sometimes it's bad. It's like that Instagram reel. Sometimes good, sometimes yeah. maybe shit. <laughs> well, I think water motion decoys are better than mojos if you had to pick one. But yes, oh, I agree too. Yeah, that's anything that's moving water. That's one, yeah, well, that's one thing that we we really want to try is some some water moving. I mean, yeah, it, yep. it seems to to be the ticket. But. Yep. Hey, what were you about to say? We wrapping up? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. I think we've, I think we've said it all. So, uh, I, I, I feel like Rossi. If you need a partner to come hunt with, I'm, let me know. I mean, you know. if you're, I'm willing to get in your boat. If you're willing to get in mine, I mean, it's a mud boat, so. You know. Oh, dude, let me preface that. I have no problems with mud motors. Yeah, I just, I just had a bad taste with his because he had a boat that weighed 900 pounds. Or more. Yeah. A small motor. We don't yeah. go nine That's miles an hour crop. in mine. We don't go 50 miles an hour, but we don't go nine miles an hour in my boat. So, uh, yeah. I feel like I passed you the other day and I felt really bad about it because I was on plane. <laughs> oh, uh, like in the morning? That sting a little bit? Yeah, in the morning. 
Oh, I probably <laughs> let you go by, yeah, for sure. Oh, not that you wouldn't have just passed me by anyways, but I was just like... No. You I would- felt bad, because I think you were just, you know, cruising along, not like, not even idled up, because I didn't see a weight coming off of you, but oh, I didn't know who good, it was. There's a good possibility if we were going north from that boat ramp that we work out of, that you did pass me, and I was not on plane, because I was just chilling, going slow, because I was like... That's the first time I'd, one of the first times I'd run out there at night. And so I was just like, oh, you know, like, well, maybe I should just slow roll this in and just not just bounce off the walls. Nah, and dude, and I'm here I am. I'm, here I'm I trying come. to con- explain him mud yeah. boats. And is that you, if you get planed up, then you've got like three inches of boat in the water. So you got way less chance of hitting stuff. All, all or nothing, buddy. Treat that throttle as a switch. <laughs> <laughs> all or nothing. Well, my Don't be bad. scared. I you didn't, didn't do anything. I said, "Oh my you god!" Didn't. You just went to... past me. I did. It was just like, "Oh, good, good." You know, I, like I just didn't even. It wasn't like you. I just steered back into the to the wake and was like, "All right, let's go." I feel better when there's not somebody behind me because I'm like, it, you know, yeah. it's only worse when you're in a kayak or, or a John boat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, That's when it's really terrible. <laughs> was that right? Right, right in. I'm sorry, man. No, you're good. Go for it. I was just saying, was I running green lights? Like green LEDs, you remember? Yeah, no, uh, maybe. I don't know. I wasn't paying enough attention because I, I didn't know. I was just like, oh, there's a boat. So I, maybe you oh. were. And I'm I, I'm trying to put some green LEDs on my boat. Some, I want to get some southern light yep. wake lights. Uh, and uh, so I'm, I was talking with Austin about this earlier. So, yeah, don't yeah, make that it. face. I saw you. I saw you. <laughs> Which one? Uh, both of you. First of all, you know you want both. You know you want these, dude. Lights. Not on my little. We've left. discussed this. Not on my little Evan Rude. We've discussed this four times. It's not that I don't want them. I'm just unsure of how I want to install them them to be installed correctly. Because you said I'm going to drill holes, then fill them with with sealant. And like I said drilling holes is fine. Filling with sealant's unnecessary because any leaks are going to be in into your transom inside where your bilge pump is. And if you ever have to replace them, getting that, uh, what is it, 5400, 5, whatever it is, out of those holes, 5200 is going to be a nightmare. Like, just, if you're going to screw them in, screw them in. That's all I'm going to do is just screw them in and run the wiring and... I'm just, I'm just unsure. Use a little rubber wash or... Exactly. Stainless screws and be done they with They come them. with a kit. And the okay. fact that and the fact that I can use them to light up a duck spread and not have bright ass white light coming off is kind of cool, and it's kind of neat running them, you know. Yeah, I've got the interior, and then the two uh, rooster tails, but that was all put in by the previous boat owner. Yeah, and one of the rooster tails doesn't even work right now, so I look like a a janky person. You look like a winking winking boat. Hey, if I can give you all. Any good advice about the rooster tail lights being on the back of the boat? If you have a dark boat ramp, it's your best friend. Sure. Boom. Like turning them on, I, I, turning them on and backing down a boat ramp is like phenomenal. You can see everything and it, it saves a lot of heartache, I guess you could say. Okay. Yeah. I rewired my trailer this, this summer and put, uh, uh, tail lights on the trailer that have reverse lights built in. So beautiful. Smart. Yeah, they're, they're pretty bright. Yeah, his are awesome. I I just got a new boat and I, I put two spotlights facing backwards, like reverse lights that point down the boat ramp. So you just flip them on. Yeah, buddy, that's smarter than my idea. I want the rooster tail lights because I can use them in a. Duck I mean, use well. what you got. You know. You know. Yeah. Well, Rossi, I appreciate you joining us. I hope that uh, you. I hope we get to. Get out and hunt some ducks. These boys will be down at the end of January, so maybe we'll. Uh, uh, I think I'm going to try to convince them to go out on a, a on a, a certain day to our our spot where we've. Hunted. That's the plan. You have to convince us. <laughs> well, that's the plan. It, it, the plan it, is it, so the plan is to go to one spot on Saturday you, and to you know? go to another spot on Sunday. Okay, so yeah, that's so. We're doing the that. plan. That yeah, so look, the plan. So Rossi, that last weekend of 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 duck season like we should we yeah. should course we should correlate go into that spot on uh on sunday and see uh we get the whole crew together and 
come up with some real funny TikToks. Because Jordan is a nightmare. <laughs> he's he's great. He's he's just always full of stuff. He wore uh, like a little. What did you wear? A little silver bikini bottoms with a duck bra. That's they were good. shorts. They were, short. they were they shorts. shorts. <laughs> I mean, I, I've. Oh my I've, gosh! This is I, so convoluted now. Yeah, but like, uh, yeah, they were just uh, iridescent uh, little shorty shorts, and I wore them under my waders and. We got to the boat ramp. I shelled my waiters out. Everyone like didn't know what to really do. That, was oh, that, the boat that old ramp. man was lost. He was just <laughs> like, what man, the fuck? like, he felt very uncomfortable, and you could tell by the way he was acting. I do. It's funny you say that because uh, I was looking for fleece overalls for men that are like cheap on Amazon, and I came across these fleece overalls that were uh, Cookie Monster overalls. And I, I almost, yes. bought them, almost bought them just for the boat ramp when I take my waders off. Yeah, dude, that's yeah. awesome. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate it, you being on. Yeah, for sure. So, where should somebody, uh, if they want to follow you on Instagram, where would they be able to to find you at? Yeah, just the uh, TikTok, Instagram, both Rossi underscore Austin. Awesome. So, yeah, pretty simple. Perfect. But thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. No doubt. We'll link up, dude, man. Thank you. Thanks for coming on, dude. Hopefully see you at the end of January. Yes. Absolutely. We'll link up. For sure. All right, guys. I'll- thanks for thanks for listening to the podcast. Follow Rossi. Give us a follow on social media at Stormwater Creek and uh, Q Braley. Stormwater Creek is the best. Grinch, the captain. Aim, the helper. Jordan, the problem solver. I hope you like Stormwater Creek. Stormwater Creek. <laughs>